You're joking, right? Well, yeah. I'm trying to be hopeful. I'm trying to be optimistic yeah. about that. Well, I guess you're too young to be a little pessimistic like me. The fucking things I see out there, people are stupid. It looks like ketchup, but I think it's that pepper, like from from the from the mango. Leave it alone. I don't know why I eat ketchup today with French fries. Leave it alone. Yeah, it's fine. A little stain on my shirt. Aye, aye, Captain. I, I feel like shirts, like you. I hi, mean, everybody. Hi. Okay, okay. I mean, they can't say hi back. And they know they're listening to us. They tune in. It'd be nice to acknowledge our peeps. All right, go um, ahead. I feel like clothes, you buy them, and it's like the first wear, they look great, and then it they never looks look good again. Never looks good <laughs> well, again. If it's Zara, we know it never looks good again. Oh, no, well, Zara, forget about it. Right. Abercrombie's got like five wears in their shirts, and then it just the Your shirt Abercrombie's changes. the same, I agree. That's I agree. just clothes nowadays. They, you, you, got, you got two good wears. After two, three washes, eh, no, There are some... Good designers that the clothes always looks good. Yeah, but they're, then they're like $350. Correct. Yeah. We were in Valentino yesterday. Mom wanted to buy some shoes, and they had dressed there for $25,000 in the outlet. In the outlet? 27000 down to twelve grand. Mom's like- Holy Mom shit. Mom goes, when I kids get married, I'm going to custom dress me. I go, yeah, okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> Mom's not invited. Yeah. Oh, my God is right. That's crazy. For, for just- con- it, It's just a con- car. It's a car. Yeah. It's and the stupidest fucking thing in the world. At right. least a car you wear, you use it every single day, a, and you, you can sell it. It's, it's even though it's depreciating asset, you still still value. What do you do? Fucking sell it on offer up. And those like the type of woman that would wear a twenty thousand dollar dress, only wearing it once, one hundred percent, because that's just the way it is. Biggest waste of money. Yeah, that's there's insane. no no bigger waste of money, and some man is paying for that. Yeah, the power of um. Women, I guess. I don't yeah. know. Okay. Because that's very stupid. I agree. But interestingly enough. Yes, Bonnie. Ooh, you're getting the hand and the finger up. Every successful designer except Chanel was a man. The entire women's fashion industry, what women like, what women think is valuable, what women think is great. Are every single one's determined by gay? men. Some, not all. But even so. It just goes to show that men, like always, men succeed. Well, even m- in women's men spaces. know what women like. We, we, whoever, men invented high heels not for women, but for men because women look so yeah, much but, better. But now women love that's like what's sex? Now it's for women. Men don't give a shit what. Oh, that's not true. No, no, I love fucking high heels. Yeah, but you're not like, you're not like interested in high heels. But you just think they look good, but you don't even. High heels are very sexy. Yeah, but the difference between like a hundred dollar pair of high heels and a thousand dollar pair. No, you. No, you, you don't feel. But you no, don't care. No, Come on. but you could tell it, and you could see it. it if a if if a girl is wearing a high heel shoe that is cheesy looking, and you know, it's unlook. I'm not talking about were, cheesy. I'm talking about inexpensive. No, but you could tell a good shoe and a not because good there shoe. are there are five thousand dollar high heels that are really cheesy. No, but but you could tell even with a guy, if you look at their shoes, you could see what a good shoes and not shoes. You could tell if somebody's classy or not by their shoes. Yeah, to an extent. To an yeah. extent, I'm a, it's a general broad statement. It's not a hundred percent absolute. Saying, uh, yeah, sure. And but it, it is interesting. YSL man, Christian Dior man, uh, Burberry man, Gucci, Gucci man, Burberry, Louis Vuitton Burberry man. Is, is not, I don't. No, but I'm just thinking of designers. It. I don't like that name one. other designers. The only designer that is not a man is Chanel, Coco Car- Chanel, Carolina Herrera. Herrera. Oh, sure, but is that a design? I guess I that's a designer. Know. All the big ones. Balenciaga. The head of that is a man. All of them. So men are telling women what women want. What they, how they should look, and I like it. Because yeah. we have to look at it. Yeah, but that, we have to look at but it. But women don't wear designer clothes for men. They wear them for women. I get it. But because men don't it. give a shit. At the end of the day, men don't really care if we a woman's wearing designer clothes. We just lingerie and high heels. I don't even care. Lingerie, I'm I don't. Teasing. I'm not a lingerie guy. Why spend money... Oh, for a specific thing that's meant to be taken off. I'd rather just not have her wear anything. If the goal of a, an item of oh clothing. Oh my God. You for, don't understand though. If a goal. If I, the, you're talking about the, literally. No, for the goal. The goal on, uh, for an item of clothing to be taken off as soon as possible. Why buy clothing for no, but that? there's a sexiness to a lingerie. I think a, a woman. Hopefully you find the woman's body itself sexy. She doesn't okay. need help. It's Okay. I think lingerie is nice for like. Someone who's not doesn't have the sexiest body, and then it makes her figure no, look better. Don't you understand? You, no, I understand the idea, but okay. it's just not for me. I never. It doesn't make sense. Okay, to I. But I'd rather you, her naked. Okay, stop talking. Sometimes, first of all, 
you you're wrong. Okay, you're wrong. No, naked. Yes, I get it. But there's also certain things that women feel pretty or sexy in lingerie. It's pretty to look at lingerie. It's sort of very feminine and and it's sensual and there's all these different things. So so it's not just like I want to be like she can be in terry cloth and that's great. But I just want her naked. No, there's a certain appeal to the visual aspect. There's an appeal to the sensuousness of it. There's more than just I, that. I understand. Aspect. Just it's, not for me. Okay. I'd rather, I, I think a girl looks better in pajamas than lingerie. Okay. I think a lot of people my age would agree with that. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Yeah. But okay. designers, men, women's spaces are all women's spaces are, are succeed. The only people that actually succeed. The top of the top are men. Well, just more, men are, in, more men are in business. Just the way it is in society, more men start a business the way it was in society. More men could become get to the top easier in in CEO roles and leadership positions. No, but I'm talking business. about designers, not CEOs. Maybe a lot of them are gay. I don't know. Or they're just good in sure. business, good marketers. Maybe they're better than women, or they were involved in the marketing world before women can you know sort of get up the chain. It of could ladder. be, but still now, like I think all the designers now Tom are still Ford. men. Yeah, but that's for men mostly. That's, okay. I'm talking about designers for women. All right. Yeah, just Fair a little enough. food for thought for you. Thank you, Bronnie, for sharing that with us. There was another thing that I just thought of while you were talking about that, but I don't remember. Wow, you're too young to be senile. No, no. Or I'm forgetful. Senile, not I mean, senile. Forgetful. It's just we've gone on like seven different tangents when we, since when we first started That's true. that it's hard to keep track of four what minutes ago, going on. Since we first started four minutes ago. Yeah. Oh, but I, I guess maybe I was going to say like women definitely dress up for women. Whereas men dress up for women. No question about it. Well, women don't dress up for men. Real, I they know They do that. it to impress other women. 100%. But men look good only for women. They 100%. Don't, they don't do it for other men. 100%. Yeah. Women do it to piss, like dogs piss in that territory. That's what women do. It's to, it's to show off. It's to, because also it's, only women appreciate certain things that no, women do. But the women, men don't notice certain things Women, women want to look better than the other women. Yeah. but It's the, like a peacock spreading its feathers. Yeah. But they claim that it's for men. They're full of shit. Yeah. I've been saying it for years. One hundred and ten percent. And I bet if you called Hannah and Mommy, and they would say, "No, it's not for other women. It's for me." Not meaning me as a guy. Sure, they would say it's, it's for would me. Say, I dress I it because it I like it. Right? It's all bullshit. No, there's a little bit of truth that when I dress up okay. and I look good, I'm like, I, I women like it. it's dress fun. for other women. Period. Yes, I agree. There period. is a bit of it of like it is nice to feel nice. Yeah, but they're not doing it when you're around. They're doing it for other women. Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm older than you. I'm telling you the reality of it. I'm glad you see. I'm that. the one that brought it up. What do you mean you're telling you me? I'm the one that. Up, I'm, I'm the one that said it. I'm just confirming it. Yes, thank you. And I have more uh, history with it. There is something to be said. Like I'm watching The Sopranos, and Carmela, Tony's wife, every time she leaves the house, every time she's even in the house, she's dressed well. Like we were just watching an episode last night, and she went to go get her nails done, and she was wearing like a beautiful outfit with her hair done and everything. And there is something to I like, like the to old that school. classiness of <laughs> no. being like, like nowadays everyone just leaves the house. The only time people don't wear sweats is like a nice dinner. Otherwise, you just wear sweats all the time. Everywhere people go. There is something to being classy. No, that's what I was in the fifties. In the fifties, um, the women would make sure they look good when their husbands came home. I like that. I think it's better. I love to come home and, and 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 have the woman always looking good. Like that show that was with the guy who sang uh, Watermelon. What was that weird show we saw? Yeah, don't worry, darling. Is that what it's called? Mm-hmm. Well, that was that all the women always looked good when the men came home. Yeah, but then the whole point of that movie was that they were being oppressed. So, because that's what I was going to say. I don't like, really care about I don't that, know if, that point. But. That wasn't the point I was trying to make, that women should look good at home no, for their men. I think I'm, men should I think too. the idea of when people leave, in, leave their home into the world... They should be presentable. I think that's the point okay, I was trying to make. But the point I'm trying to make is go one step further. I'm not I'm making a different point. That you should be presentable at home. I think men should look good for their wives and vice versa. So if I don't think I should be looking like a slob at home, I think I should look good for my wife at home. No, I think at home you should be your most comfortable. It's your home. No, what, but what I, like when I you think leave a man should come home to his wife and his wife should not be looking unsexy. Period. I guess if the man is like dressed well. But the if man the, if comes the man home, is slobby, okay, I, okay, I get it. But a man's coming home from work. I'm talking like a white collar kind of guy, not a construction worker guy. So you're so you're thinking, oh, okay, white. I'm just saying, if I'm coming home, I want my wife looking good. I don't need my wife in fucking sweats or pajamas when I'm coming home. Sure, 
I want my wife to look good. Just because, says you shouldn't come home and sweat some pajamas. Right. Because because But it's not because she I don't think it's like, oh, because she's a woman. She needs I think to, I think there is a part of it. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I'm I'm just trying to make the point like people should be pr- more presentable than they are. Well, they lost. People that. are people, very slovenly they're nowadays. Fat and ugly and they walk around with less clothes and your fucking rolls hanging out there. Ugly fucking no, people. No, most people cover up everything. That was really where I don't agree baggy, with you. Baggy, no, I, the clothes. women fucking fat ass. They, I got, literally, I I went to that um, in Meisner Park, the coffee shop, and it was like a Saturday at like one in the afternoon, and the girl working on the counter was literally, they were pajama pants. No, no, they're not, I'm not, I'm not saying they might have been. They were 100%. She went to work. She had her T-shirt on that said the coffee thing, and 100%. They were pajama pants. Yeah. Now, I said in my mind to myself, when I, we, it, no one went to work in pajama pants. I now, would never people, even think of it. The people that work in that store is a little grungy, that one. Like Carmela's coffee is clean. They look yeah, nice. I mean, the coffee shop's a bit of a different vibe. It's, okay. It's earth. I get it. Like grape nutty. So then I'm in Carmela's. Hipster. W- yeah, but pajamas. Yeah. I mean, no, that's, period. That's just disrespectful. Then I'm in Carmela's coffee like maybe two weeks ago. By the way, I got my first free coffee at Carmela's for all the points. Isn't Every time that? I go, I put in your number. Me too. So um, for those who are listening, no, listen, but, um, and Brian, two girls walked in. They might, might have been 19 or 20. Forget the fact that they were fat, but they literally, if I was, if mom was sick with the flu and COVID combined, she looks better and dressed more appropriate. These girls were so inappropriate. They, it almost like, did you just wake up? Did you... Not finding that match, like is it clothes? Is it no, pajamas? That's, that's the style now. That's no, the point I'm trying to make. Style. It's disgusting. No, no, no. And I, they wonder why they can't meet a guy because it's so on a tra- It's it's literally it's like saying, "What can I do to make me look less unattractive, less attractive?" Yeah, but don't their mothers teach them? No, I guess not. Their mothers are probably grosser. Don't so you everyone look good? should. I, don't you want to look good? I, I like leaving the house. I don't like Being when clean. I look like slobby. Just be clean looking. Is that the word slobby? Yeah. Bronson, they literally said, nope, I look too nice, I gotta put something else on. <laughs> nope, that's not good enough, I gotta look less uh, attractive. Yeah. I mean, they make them just look less attractive. And, and it's, it's a dirty look. Like, you, like, it's not grunge, like when I, like whatever. It's dirty looking. Like, like your clothes hasn't been washed. You didn't, you didn't bathe yet today. Yeah. You didn't brush your teeth. You didn't, you didn't shave or you didn't do your hair. Like, it's, it's, it's not sloppy, it's dirty. There's a big difference. Yes. Like these pants are a little sloppy. They're like a like a they're casual, a baggy. They're a beachy, but, casual vibe. But, but they're not dirty looking, right? But theirs is dirty looking. Well, they're dirty. Ugh, fuck. Yeah. Man, with the asthma smell, smell like their fucking armpits and every slitten dub. What? Ugh, disgusting. Yeah, that would suck. That would ugh, suck. Gross. When you get a whiff, a whiff of a person that smells bad, it's the worst. And it, like it sucks too because they don't know they smell bad. You don't, but if it's your own smell, you don't really know. After like an hour, you get used to it and you don't know. There was a guy that worked in my office. He was the nicest guy, but he smelled his clothes. I don't know if he ever washed his clothes, but, but, and they don't know. Impossible. No, impossible. They don't know. Like you, people don't know when their own home smells bad. You know, it's that kind of thing. By the way, our, our bedroom with the dog. Dad, when I walked in from the garage today, I walked right in and I smelled dog in our house. Mm-hmm. So what do we do? I don't know. Kill the dog? Yeah. It, it, I walked in and I went, ugh. Okay. When I, it hits you. When I walk from my bathroom into our bedroom because of that carpet. That, that's disgusting. My, I shower and I'm I come not going to name the name, but one of my friends growing up in high school, every time I walked into his house, it smelled like dog. And I was like, I don't want to sit in your couch. It made, I was like, I don't want to be in this home. Well, that dog shit all over the place. Our dog yeah, doesn't you know shit. what I'm talking about, yeah. I guess. Our dog doesn't shit. It's just, he just. Yeah, but, it's, like, but when it smells like dog, it's gross. So what do we do? I don't know. Get rid of the dog. I don't know. Um, my friend. Yeah, it's a problem. Fuck. My friend told me a story once that she, in college, went into a guy's dorm, like a, just a friend of hers, went into a guy's dorm, and his girlfriend was there too, and she walked in, and it smelled like fish, like tuna fish. And she was like, oh, what is that smell? What? And He the, said it to her. No, no. She, my friend goes, oh, like she walked into this guy's room. His girlfriend was sitting on the bed. Wait, wait. She walked. She walked into a guy's room, and the guy's girlfriend was in also in and the room. And the girl said, "What's this?" And smell? the girl walked in to the uh, to the dorm room and goes, "Oh, what's that smell?" She said, "It smelled like tuna fish." And she goes, "Oh, what's the smell?" And the the guy looks at her and is like, "Shh, shh, shh. 
his girlfriend's vagina smelled like that, Dad. Okay. Can you imagine there's that no people? Way. There's no way. How but the do guy you, said that? The guy can't get an erection. No, how, right? How? And it's like, if that's, like, that girl needs to see a doctor. If it's smelling like tuna fish wafting in the room. That's nauseating. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I had experience like that once in college. Okay, shit. Well, I don't want to know your experience. Brutal. And when I say my friend, I truly mean, I don't mean me. I did not have that experience. You can't get an erection. It's the worst thing in the world. It's that's his, that's his Wait, girlfriend. she had her pants on and smelled like that? Yeah, I mean, they oh, probably just had sex, I would assume. How so that could it wafted you? out in the how air. How could you have? I don't know. That- Stop saying waft. I don't like it. <laughs> and he's doing the hand movement too, people. I don't like it. Waft. Is that not insane? It's the that's. I don't understand how someone could not know that that they smell like that. So my friend, he's a the OBGYN. He said he could. This is the God's own truth. He said, "Ew, I'm getting nauseous." He's fat. He said, "Obese, obese black chick." Ugh. And he goes, and it, 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 terrible odor. They couldn't find the odor throws from the vagina. They found she like, had food in her f- about folds. Two weeks later, she had a, a, a sandwich, tuna fish sandwich in her fold. No, there's no way. Why would he lie? That's in Michael. No, 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 no. I know yeah, who you're yeah, talking yeah. about. And I don't mean I'm not saying, oh, he's lying. It's just there's no way. That's an insane thing. So how is it? I, I know we talked about this before. But tuna fish. Yeah. That's the worst one uh, wait, to get wait, stuck. But how, At least like salami. It's not. Wait, or blame it on the vagina. Salami smells bad too. No, but salami is already aged. You know, tuna fish after wait, one hour. Wait, so so it's go, it's rancid. How is it? And I'm not, I'm being desert. How do they fucking wipe their ass? Oh, like a fat, an obese person. How do you get around? You can't do a reach around. Truly, I don't know. I guess you have to have what a do you bidet. Do? You have no, to have a bidet. You... Come on, these people could afford a the bidet. They're like forty dollars now. They're not getting a bidet. Dad, if they're obese, all, they're eating a lot of food. All, they can afford. How do they sit on their the toilet? Things hang off. And and what kind of obese are we talking? Like morbidly, like yeah. six hundred pound life or, or whatever on TLC. Some pounds is a no. Pound you could get under there. No, you can't. And there's another thing. How do you? Um, a bidet is not going to clean it thoroughly. You got to wipe that shit. Oh, psh. you're wiping still. You live it. You're a barbarian. You're living. The difference between your hygiene and someone in mid, the Middle Ages is the same. If you're not using a bidet, so you don't use any wipes. Just do no. Bidet. Okay. So I have a bidet. It it is it is so powerful that I have to be so delicate with how much I'm turning on because if I just go, phew, it's going to go through my asshole into up my out my oh, mouth. Oh, Bronson, just stop. It's so powerful. So I I go shh, I squirt it for whatever, 7 seconds. Then I turn it off. This is a little TMI. Then I take a couple paper three sheets of paper towel just to dry it. And as you're drying it, nothing comes on the paper towel. And then I put that in there and then I flush. But do you pat it or you wipe it? I I wipe it dry. You wipe it doesn't it leave the toilet if it's wet? It's a wet toilet paper. I wipe it dry. I don't do it hard. I, it's delicately as I go, and it's and perfectly you of, clean. And you got a hairy ass, so you don't get any. Shit. That's why you need the bidet. Otherwise, you're smearing. My, no, my ass is no. smooth. No, I don't have hair on my ass. Oh, okay, but still, you, when you take toilet paper, no. So wait, you? It's one hundred percent clean. I my toilet paper is clean. So afterwards. you, you are like, I have to wash my hands every time after I. Go to the bathroom. Well, it is my, it or is my ass. No, it I is my ass. Right, but way. you wash your hands because you're like it's gross. But you're not using soap. I wash my hands with soap. W- water is so much better than than no. You don't have paper. You're, you don't have a power washer. You're, there. T- you're taking paper and you're just rubbing it all up in there. And there's no, no way no, it cleans it. It's cl- so you unhygienic. Clean your ass. First of all, it's an ass number one. But I do. So? Cl- you clean. I clean my ass thoroughly, and then I take the wet wipes. Oh, so you you wipe dry and then wipe wet? Yeah. The, what's wrong with you? You always go wet to dry. No, but why are you doing it both? Thoroughly, because no. then the wet wipe cleans it nice, and then let it but why dry not for a just, minute. Then when you wash your hands, you're going your, your way, ass gets clean. Once you're on day, fifty-seven, I know how to wipe my ass better no, than you. No, incorrect. You, wait, wait. Have you I ever, use water? Have you ever wiped my ass? I use water wait, like yes. a civilized. Have you ever human. wiped my ass? No, I have wiped your ass. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I use water like a civilized human. The whole country of Japan, even in the dirt, in the poorest right, public, we'll go to Japan in May. You'll never go back. Okay, then I'll get I'll get that new Toro, whatever that that Toto. that eight thousand. Dad, even in the the subway station bathrooms in Tokyo, they have bidets because the some places don't even have tissue paper, toilet paper. And can you move so the angle? You can move the angle. You can do everything. The 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 um ones in to, in Japan even have a button that plays sounds if you're like you want privacy. It'll emit like sounds. Pull up the Toto, uh, the good one. What are they like ten grand? There, you'll. Ne- I mean, my bidet was forty dollars. No, but I'm not getting after Mark woman. Woman. Yeah, I mean, you want the one that's all built in. The ones in Japan, you walk as you walk up to the toilet, it the opens. lid opens for so you. It should be. Yeah. Does it close automatically too? Yeah. 
Unbelievable, I love it. It's sanit- as it closes, it sanitizes everything inside too. Seven grand, eight grand. This one's 12 grand. What does it do? Um, I don't know. This one is 21 grand. Get the fuck out. Does it blow you? <laughs> it's very nice looking. Um, let's it see, should features. blow you for 21 grand. Low profile, smart, ultra high efficiency, dual flush functionality, tornado flush system, um, auto flush with backup manual flush for power outages, auto open and close lid. Uh, the pre miss automatically miss the bowl before each use. Clean light technology built into the lid for sanit- sanitizing. Siphion Tech ceramic glaze minimizes waste from sticking to porous ceramic surfaces. Gentle aerated warm water dual action spray with oscillating and pulsating features. Instantaneous water heater for continuous warm water. Adjustable spray position, water temperature, and water pressure. I want one. It auto cleans the bowl, the wand, and under the seat after every use. Heated seat with temperature control. Seamless seat design eliminates the gap where dirt collects. Warm and air dryer with five variable temperature settings. Automatic air deodorizer. Automatic energy saving. That's a toilet we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. It has four different personalized memory settings. So you can like. I don't want anybody sharing. You can have a a button that's like, I like like this temperature. I like this. What's the seven to 10 grand? Can you go back and tell me what it is? The seat's heated. In in Japan, you sit on a public toilet and it's like heated, which feels a little weird, but it's like, what's the um, what's the seven ten grand one? This is a podcast, by the way. That's this all right. Is but my birthday's coming up, guys. Oh, that's a good. You want a toilet? God. Um, ooh, this one comes in nickel. Fe- features. It looks like it's all the same. We'll have to do a, like a a side by side. Oh, but dad, they're the best. Once you go a bidet, you never go back. The fuck's that? This is the remote control. It goes on the wall and you have all the buttons that you press to control wow. it. Should, yeah. I get, should I get one of these toilets? Yeah, you should. Because here's the thing. It's so dirty. Like poop is so dirty. But and it's just two shit cleans it every day. But just to wipe it with your hand and then even putting your hand in there, when you use that, you don't, your hands go nowhere near your, your asshole. It's like, it's all but sanitary. It's my, it's my asshole. But it's not, it's about, it's not about your asshole. It's the poop. Poop is nasty and dirty. Uh, I don't have an issue with it, but I hear you. I might get one of those. But days are, I mean, it's just the best. Toto's the best one? Yeah. Any, you just got to get a Japanese one. Toto's Japanese. You got to get a Japanese one for sure. Because wow. they, ja, the Japanese know anal hygiene. <laughs> I bet, I got to see if Matt is a contract and get me a discount on them. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, so. Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> What's going on with I have not been following anything. This episode is brought to you by Manscaped. New year, new you. Your new year's resolution was probably something involving bettering your life. Yeah, like working out. Yeah, everybody goes, I'm going to lose weight and work out. Yeah, but a good one is also like better hygiene. And you do accomplish that without the Manscaped. For real, it's the new year. You got to start it off right, like looking good, feeling good. And you can do that with Manscaped's products. I do it all the time. Um, I use my beard hedger to trim down the new lawnmower for 5.0, which is their brand new one. It's great. It is. If you thought the old ones were good, like this one, literally the old ones, I would always get a little nervous when I was going like shaving my balls with it. I would like trim. it makes a little bit. Yeah. I was just like, I didn't fully trust it. This one oh, glides right on them. I fully trust it. And I, I love the hair, the nose one is a big one for me. The weed whacker for your ear. And the little flat razor when you clean your shit up. Yeah, that that the crop that does not cut anything. That one's great. I mean, it doesn't no bleeding. Yeah, you could push that shit so hard. <laughs> no, on your chest, I go yeah. I go every direction. It's so smooth. I love the way it's smoothed. It how yeah. smooth it is. It's great product. So they got a bunch of new products that you guys should go check out. Upgrades to old stuff that you might have, or if you don't have any products, go buy the new stuff. You won't regret it. But what what you need to understand? Our listeners need to understand. It's a great fucking gift. Yeah. No, it's it's priced reasonably. It's a great gift for your boyfriend, for your husband, for your son. It, it, it's, it's so good because I find nothing. I got to tell you, when, when, when people have hair out of their nose, their ears, or the back of the neck. You can't do it. No, I think it's disgusting. People wait a month till they get their hair cut and they do the back of the neck once a month. It, it makes you look gross. I'm sorry. And then it, everything trickles down no, from there. No, it's gross. You have to pre- it's be gross. presentable. Yeah. No, it, I don't get it. I, nose hair. So don't be here. don't be gross. Don't start the year off on a gross note and go There's to manscaped.com. No reason for you to do that. Agreed. Yep. So you can accomplish all those problems by heading to manscaped.com. And if you use the code DADDYISSUES20, you'll get 20% off your order and free shipping. 
So like Dad said, it's already reasonably priced, but by listening to the show, you get 20% off in free shipping. Which is almost like they're paying you. With the code DADDYISSUES20. So go check out all this stuff. Start the new year off right. It'll help you keep your other resolutions in check because if you're feeling, if you're looking good, you're feeling good. And if you're feeling good, you can accomplish the things that you want to do. Listen, people listen to us because they like us. They like what we have to say and they respect us. And we're telling point blank, fucking Manscaped, great product. Great yeah. product, period. So once again, manscaped.com, use the code daddyissues20 and you'll get 20% off your order and free shipping. Okay, so- Thinking about it, so speaking about assholes. Yeah, right? Right. Um, and speaking about, about gross shit. Fuck, it's been so long. We haven't done it. Did we do the thing at the beginning? Cancel culture. Did we do yeah. the opening? We yeah, did the and you, it was so loud. You went, oh. You're right, you're right, you're right. And then I saw the stain on my shirt. Wow, we're going back to everything. <laughs> yeah. I honestly, first And then time, we talked about people only, not dressing well. It's only Sopranos, Carmella away. walks out. and Okay. Um, Mom's going to buy a $20,000 dress for my wedding, apparently. <laughs> right. Um, so when are you getting engaged, Ronnie? So Sopranos. When are you not Sopranos, I mean Jeffrey you, Epstein. I threw you off, huh? <laughs> yeah. Jeffrey Epstein. Um, finally, after like four years, they released f- files from the depositions of all the people involved in the case. So why so long is a weird thing. Very odd. Um, and the, it was the court that unsealed some of the records. And it was just like all these depositions from a lot of the girls that were seemingly involved, like some of the whistleblowers, the people who were suing, no, no all that pun, stuff. No pun intended. Whistleblowers. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Um, and so we we're finally like getting official names of people who were like involved at least the thing is these names are from people who have mentioned them in deposition. So I guess it's true, but it's not like, it's not like we have like the flight log records that are released, right? Okay. You know, there's a slight difference between someone saying, yes, Bill Clinton won on the plane and then a record of him going. So I'm just giving that caveat. Um, but I mean, I, I, I believe everything that's going on in these records because it's all like, it's all believable. And what would the, why would these people lie about this stuff? Um, so finally, they release all these documents. First of all, the media, how they're covering it is despicable. Are they covering it or not covering they're it? They're covering it, but the first thing that any of any media coverage on any of these Epstein documents, the first thing they say is there's no... There, there, there's there's no substantiated. No, there, yeah, there, there's no... Uh, just because someone's name is involved does not mean that there's any fault, any wrongdoing, any breaking of a law any malfeasance, nothing. Just because their name's involved doesn't mean anything. That's the first thing that all these media are doing. Meanwhile, you know if Trump's name was on any of the documents, They'd be going it would off. be, oh my God. They'd be going I'm at 110%. Right? It's like so annoying. Correct. And w- with Trump, so, so with this, they're like, just because someone's name is implicated does not mean any malfeasance. It does not mean any wrongdoing. But if it was Trump, they'd be all but over. But w- with all the like Russia, Trump, Russia stuff, if there was not, there wasn't even connections. They had, they were like, there's a rumor of a steel dossier where Trump was rumored to pee on a girl. And there were all these different things. And they're like, where there's smoke, there's fire. That's where all the yeah, media said. We know that's bullshit. But now they're like, nope. If, his, if Bill Clinton is named 50 times for going to this island, doesn't mean he did anything wrong. It's so annoying. And why are they going to the island, really? I mean, come on. To f- little girls. Yeah, I get him. Same. And now this is going to get demonetized. <laughs> you can bleep that out. Yeah, I can. Right. Yeah. Because that, de- that would get this episode demonetized. Okay. I mean, we don't make that much money from our YouTube ad revenue. But, but every penny counts for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Bill Clinton was named like 50 times within these depositions. His name came up like 56 times from all different people who were like, yep, I was on the plane with him. Yep, I was on the island with him. Yep, he was always there. So he's a big one. But no one saw him do anything, but he's there. We don't have you're, anything you're, yet. So you're saying we're going to smoke the fire. Oh, absolutely. You're, Why be there? You're not, it's not like- It's you're not going one to, time, it's 50 times. Right, and this island, Little St. James, there was one building on it. You know, it's not like, oh- he went to Jamaica a bunch of times. It's like, there's stores in Jamaica. There's hotels. There's things to do. This island is tiny. There's nothing. You fly in, there's one building, and that's it. So it's like, you can't, you can't hide behind, well, oh, you're going, just going you're for going, vacation. You're going there for a purpose. Of course, because there's nothing on the island. Who else was on the Stephen list? Stephen Hawking, a bunch. What can he do, though? His, his, he I can have sex. Come here, little girl. He can have sex. He even cheated on his wife with his nurse. And his computer. And now he's to, with that nurse. He said multiple alive? kids. Yeah. He's still alive. Yeah, so his... his Who would have sex with him? He's he had like, all his kids after. Looking. Yeah, but women like... Power and brilliance, uh, I guess. A woman like smart 
men, I guess. I don't know. He's a freaky looking dude. So he was on the island a bunch of times, like, which is insane. That him in his wheelchair. Jeffrey Epstein apparently like targeted scientists a lot for it. The, one of the biggest things too is, so sure, we're getting all these names. When they raided Jeffrey Epstein's house in Manhattan, and I think the one, one in Palm Beach, we can find the pictures. The, so th- there were a bunch of pictures from that initial FBI raid, a bunch that were first released, and then they like got buried. So where's the thing how he, he never, the money he got, it must have been all from blackmail. So that's what I was just about to say. Because in these original pictures, because, so you said, but Clinton went to the island, but like, what, there's nothing to like incriminate him. Um, in the original pictures of the FBI raids. That's why he was killed. Someone had him killed, 100%. I've seen of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, even the coroner was like, this wasn't a suicide, but no one talks about it. And they always say he died by suicide. But in the, in the original pictures, I remember seeing this, they were boxes there was like a cupboard under his stairs in one of the houses that was had um you know like store plastic storage bins that you put under your bed or whatever yeah yeah from the dozens of those filled with tapes and cds and dvds and vhs's filled so it's like you probably videotaped of course those are all that's all the blackmail videos so it's like i don't care about these depositions Release the fucking videos. Well, easy to kill. You know what I mean? But like, that's where, that's what we need. That's the evidence. And they have those videos. The FBI- And t- the problem is these girls are underage. Is that the problem? Yeah. So here's my question. These girls, where are their parents? They're sex trafficked, dad. It's like a girl from Yugoslavia. Okay, gotcha. Who, Ghislaine Maxwell, who is Jeffrey Epstein's like- Madam. Yeah. She, she would like court all these women and be like, you can come to America, you'll meet all these amazing men, you know, you'll make money, it'll be great. And then they bring them from some random village in Russia or Brazil or whatever, and they bring them to the island. And it's like, what do you mean their parents? They have no fucking idea. You get them from a little village in the Philippines and bring them over. I get it now, I understand. Yeah, that's what it was, mostly, I think. I think it was a lot of Eastern European women. Women and girls. First of all, it's good that Jeffrey Epstein's dead. It is. No, we need them alive to... To rat everybody out. Yeah, we need him. We need his He's deposition. Not, he would have been killed. You know what I mean? Not the girls. So, Ghislaine? Ghislaine, Ghislaine, okay. I don't know. She's in jail. Yeah. Didn't she testify against people? Or she never Yeah, did? but none of that was... She, she's on trial, but like none of it's ever released or anything. They keep it such, hu- such hush-hush. Power. Yeah. Um, Power. Though. Prince Andrew was one of the biggest names. Um, so, he was... He's like Why in the royal family. Why would they go? Why would they go? They're fucked up. What do you mean? You know, you know people who are into that shit. Okay, so I had a client. Listen, is that a client that he ran like a Ponzi scheme? So he had this. He created his own like fund, and he got investors. And I mean, I've had a client in years now, and of course, I'm not mentioning name. You don't know what I'm talking about, but so he would have this company, and let's assume he had five million. Let's say he had fifty million dollars in investor money. For like minerals, iron and ore, mm-hmm. and the guy was short, like by by like eight million, because he took the money, but he kept telling his investors like a little like Bernie Madoff thing that was making money. But if you ever got audited, it yeah. wouldn't. It was, or if if people all wanted their money, back. right? So, so um, this is years ago, probably seven years ago, even whatever. And he used to want, and he used to talk to me, and I said, "Look, we can't talk in your office," and he was so narcissistic. That when I was in his office, whoa, wait, wait. you would say to him, "We can't talk in I, your I, office." I go, you don't want to talk in your office. Come Why? to my office because who knows, who knows it's being bugged or not, right? So, but so a couple times in his office, can they use a, a lawyer talking to his client for anything? I don't think so. If it, if I mean, it, if it's if it's bugged, I don't know what the deal is. I don't. Can I don't, you bug, Can you use that as evidence? But okay, if you're bu- if it's okay, bugged, here's the thing: if it, I do know that anything a client tells me is privileged, unless it's well, you work. Won't. We just learned about this, and like, well, you go, you go. Okay. But if, like, if if you tell me as a client, I killed somebody that buried here under the tree on the corner of Maple and Elm, I can't tell the police. But if you say I'm going to kill this person, I have an obligation. That's not privileged. So I guess I'm just if you want to make an argument that if he's talking about a committing a crime, and they're bugging it, it's not privileged, right? So, right. But either way, the point yeah, of story sure, sure. is the point of story is. So when I was in his office, 
he was so narcissistic that he would have a tailor, while I'm talking to him, measuring him for suits. That's so annoying. A shoemaker making shoes from custom. And then I remember, so we were talking. What does that have to do with little girls? No, I'm saying, I'm saying there's a reason I'm going to tie it okay. together. So he had his private plane, but it was all scam money, right? Yeah. And he says, I but imagine you, buying a private plane with some other listen, people's money. He goes, I want you to come down to Mexico and visit the mine with me. Flo will fly down today for the day on my plane. And of course, I would bill him whatever. And I said, no. I said, I can't do that, whatever. Most lawyers would do, would go there. Yeah. And the reason why is like, I don't need the FBI taking photos of me with him. Yep. Thinking that I'm part of it, this and that. So I always, and he kept saying, come with me. I go, nope, nope, nope. And I would have made, it would have been like a $10,000 a day, you know, in billables. Yeah. But so the guy, of course, is in jail. I haven't spoken to him in God in so many years. But, because let's say that plane was like a Jeffrey Epstein type plane, right? That's what I'm saying about. Meaning, Even if you just went on and it was, you were just doing regular business. Correct. But now it's like your name's on the plane. And I'm sure there are some people that's named were in this drop. But my point is I don't need, I have nothing to hide, but I don't need now me being right. on just the being radar involved with that. of the FBI or whatever it is because they're after totally. this guy. Because And a and lawyer's a little bit different position because I'm his lawyer. But still, I don't need still, that. I agree. But so like- I, there are definitely That's some. That's how the analogy yeah, I was making yeah. to that. Right. There are definitely some names that were involved in this list that were a, people, a situation like that. They were like, oh, this guy, I, I met him once. He's flying me out, whatever, whatever. So when, here's, oh, wait, before I get to that. Oh, wait, even if you didn't do anything, let's say you just went on a plane, but now you're compromised because you are put in an uncomfortable situation knowing that what they're doing is wrong and you're now condoning no, no, Even it. if you don't know that, like, let's say you didn't go to the island, you just flew on the plane and you went to three dinners with Jeffrey Epstein, but you just knew, right? Like there are people that it. we know that it's just like, they're a person and they probably have a bad, a whole bad side, but we don't know that side of them. So I'm sure there are some of that. Yeah. But it's a- What were you going to say? I'm not even going to Oh, I was going to say um, a lot of people like the Clintons and stuff who flew on the plane all the time, like people in that level, a lot of them are saying their defense was we flew on the plane because he gave us access to it and we needed it for like- Trips. Oh, so, so they're, they're so, not flying with him. They're just using his plane. Some probably were just, sometimes they were probably just using the plane. Sometimes okay, but that's true. If him. they're not going to the island, then they can use this plane. Yeah, but. People charter out of, of, of land out their planes all the time. I don't, I don't think the defense of, of I was going to use, I'm using Jeffrey's plane to fly to speeches. Like, if you're that good of friends with him that you're using his plane, you to fly around the country. You know what he does. Correct. Right. That's or, not a defense. But, but people charter planes. Like, I don't think it's charters. I think planes let other, you know, will rent out their Sure, plane. but I don't think that's what it was. And I don't think if you're doing 50 times. Also, I mean, with Bill Clinton, he went to the island many times. His, the flight logs and all that. Listen, too. Bill Clinton, I don't know enough about, but I, he is a creepy, cringy somewhat. I mean, he publicly had an affair with a 19-year-old. And, who worked for and him. he's, you know, these are all narcissistic people. They are truly powerful, narcissistic people, and they're, it's, nothing surprises me. I just, how did you, like, if you're Prince Andrew, and you're in the royal family, right, like, the queen is your, there's people that are just, how are you, and you know what Jeffrey Epstein does, like, a lot of them, a lot of the people who went to the island, or were, would go to dinners with Jeffrey Epstein all the time, like, Bill Gates, it's like, went to dinner five times with Epstein or something, and they say, it's like, if you're that high level in the world, you know what he does. Disassociate yourself. You, you, you're not like you're not just like, oh, this guy just wants to take me out to dinner. Like, there's no way. If you're Bill Gates, you, your dinners are so scheduled. You're not just like, oh, there's this nice Jewish guy that wants to go out to dinner with me. No, you know what he does. It's amazing Epstein even got his position of power. And wealth. Well, apparently, the, the theory he's is- He's a nobody. Well, the, that's, the theory is that he's the face of a bigger organization that he was propped up, that there's a deeper organization and he's just the manager who's shaking your hand at the front. But the real what, owners, what the CEOs- What is that? The, that sex trade. It's not all one man. There's no way. The, big, the biggest sex trafficking to the highest level people, it's not just one random Jewish guy who got all his money from investors. There's no way. People propped him up. Some, a lot of people think that it's- that it's more Ghislaine and her family. Her dad was like Israeli counterintelligence. Her sister is like high up involved in some secret agent thing. So a lot of people are like, that's the brains of the organization and Jeffrey was the face because a, like a woman would never be 
able to be the face of it. Right. Um, who knows? But there's no way Jeffrey was like the brains and the, and the, well, he's dead and she's in jail, right? Yeah. Fucking people are crazy. People are crazy. It's crazy that that exists, that whole world. Well, I think it's crazy. There's so much that goes on with the, like, Taken, the movie Taken. That's the cr- shit Yeah, all that's the time. what Epstein did. It was just sex trafficking of people. How, do, how does a guy, and we know people do this, but how does a guy knowing the girl's drugged up and not the end of it? It's, it's just a power thing. It's not a sexual thing. It's a power thing. It, the, the sexual arousal is from the having the power over a, a, no, I, an, in I, a vulnerable I, person. I think it's just an evil thing. That's what it is. It's, it's I'm a man and I have this power over this vulnerable woman. That, that's what people... Yeah, that's I mean, it's, a, that's, yeah that's no, you're fucked evil. up. Yeah, you're fucked up. A lot of it too is people that can't get that, that don't have power in their real life or don't have sexual power in their real life. Most of the people that were on the list of fucking Epstein's list are like nerds. Bill Gates, Stephen Hawking. Like, Ugh. they're people who aren't sexual people. So I think it's like Stephen if they're- Stephen Hawking, what a fucking retard. Yeah, let me see if I can get other people who, let's see who else. Did they say the guy from, uh, what's Two and a Half Men, the actor, wasn't he one of them? Charlie Sheen? Yeah. I doubt it. Uh-huh. He was such a womanizer. Like, why would yeah. he need a facilitator for that, you know? Um, the thing too is this isn't even, it's so annoying how they're doing it. He died four years ago. The trial was like six years ago. Or whatever. I don't know if that timeline is exactly accurate, but <clears throat> why are they just releasing now? And they're not releasing everything. They're just releasing a little bit of it. I don't understand. I mean, it's just clearly, it's, power. it's clearly because of the, of the yeah. Yes. But then why that. someone like Bill and Hillary Clinton, like that we would think of them as the power of power. Why? If, if the power are trying to keep this all in and have been doing that, then why is Bill Clinton's name out there 50 times? You know, I would think he would be able to keep it in. I don't know if you can keep everything. I think you think you can trickle it down so it doesn't have as much effect. And maybe like since now it's years, years after. Like, like we don't care as much. Right. I, I objectively don't care as Correct. much as when Epstein was killed. You know, then it was like I really care. We need to know these names. Um, so that could be it too. Let's see. 191 newly unsealed documents are part of a larger group. About 250 that are be are expected to be released in the coming days, naming more than 170 people. I don't even know why they even sealed in the first place. They're not minors. Yeah. What's the point of it being right. sealed? I don't know. Maybe like for They did safety. it because it's power. No, it's power. But also like what if you, like that situation where you flew on that guy's plane to Mexico just for a business deal. Let's say that guy was an Epstein type and now your name is involved. That's very, very bad for you to innocently have Maybe. your name now associated with all this rather than let's hold it all true, figure I, out I who's think, true or I not think this is a power th- th- a lot of money and wealth yeah but people. i could see a court being like there's so the many names won't here seal it unless an attorney asks for it to be sealed. but that's yeah but i could i get what i'm saying is like i could see a judge being like you know what let's keep this under wrap figure out what's true, real and what's why not seal it now because maybe they've worked through what's real and what's not i don't know uh, yeah I, I don't know why it's um so yeah, Prince Andrew. Let me is that a picture of him? Yeah, with a girl and Ghislaine. Can I see? That's it? one of the girl. That's can one of, you make it bigger? Yeah. So this is one of the girls who was involved. This is one of the girls who's suing. One of the court cases is who from are they her. suing? Um, so let's read it. It says. So how old is she? Um, Virginia Jeffrey Jeffrey's 2015 defamation suit against the dead sex offenders, Madam Ghislaine Maxwell. I thought she was still alive. The dead sex offender. Yeah, Jeffrey Ensign's mad. Oh, yeah. So it's, yeah. so she's suing But does Ghislaine. she have money? Do they have money? Um, included references to Prince Andrew, former President Bill Clinton, and Stephen Hawking, among other figures. The lengthy list of boldface names paints a troubling. Um, so let's see. It says, in addition to her allegations, she was for... In addition to her allegations, she was forced to have sex with Prince Andrew while underage. The documents reveal additional claims about the disgraced British royal including that he allegedly participated in an underage orgy. So this is her with him and Ghislaine. So it's like the fact that we even have a picture is pretty damning evidence. What's the point of it? Um, One woman identified as Jane Doe 3 testified that she was forced to have sexual relations with the prince when she was a minor in three separate geographical locations. That's from a 2014 court filing. Um, Those look... Locations included Ghislaine Maxwell's London apartment, an unspecified location in New York, and on Epstein's Island in the U.S. Virgin Islands. 
in an orgy with numerous other underage girls. Um, the filing also claims Epstein told the sex slave to give the prince whatever he demanded. Another Epstein accuser, Johanna Soberg, said in her deposition that Prince Andrew touched her breast while they were posing for a photo on a couch in Epstein's Manhattan townhouse. In that same photo, Soberg testified the royal also groped Jeffrey's, which it, Jeffrey, which is this girl, Virginia, her breast with a puppet that looked like him. Epstein's former butler, Juan Alessi, claimed Andrew received daily messages when he spent weeks at his boss's Palm Beach, Florida mansion. So Prince Andrew would live in Epstein's Palm Beach so mansion weird, for weeks. Isn't it? It's like, come it's weird. on, you're the you're a prince. Just rent a hotel. Like you're it's clearly weird. in the house for a reason. In the wake of the documents, uh, the anti-monarchy group Republic reported Prince Andrew to the uh, Metropolitan Police. Um, so here, Bill and Hillary Clinton. Bill Clinton's name appears 73 times in the papers, but he is not implicated in anything illegal. Here's a picture of Epstein and Bill Clinton on Epstein's plane, both looking like they just fucked a girl in the back. Like, look how... They look so, like, they sly. They look gross. Don't they? Yeah. Um, as part of Soberg's testimony, she recalled Epstein telling her that Clinton, quote, likes them young, referring to girls. Clinton, who flew in Epstein's jet multiple times, has denied having any knowledge of the crimes and documents that were unsealed on Thursday. It was revealed that the former president allegedly stormed into the Vanity Fair newsroom and threatened staffers to not publish stories uh, about sex trafficking allegations against his, quote, good friend, Jeffrey Epstein. The claim was mentioned by Epstein accuser Virginia Jeffrey in a 2011 email exchange. I mean, yeah, let's see who else. Former, Don, former President Donald Trump appeared at least four times in the unsealed documents. Here's how you know that Trump wasn't involved. Not to just always be defending Trump, whatever, in this episode. Here's how you know Trump wasn't involved in anything bad. Because if there was anything, it they be would be out. running with that. Beyond, as the it lead. Would be the cra- it would be the best news story of the year. Absolutely. And we haven't heard anything about and Trump. And they really want that, it. especially with the election coming up. Yeah, that's yep. what I'm saying. Yep. They're combing through those documents looking for Trump. Yep. So let's see, in Soberg's deposition, she described how Epstein once called up the real estate mogul and suggested visiting one of his casinos when Epstein's private jet was diverted from New York to Atlantic City. Jeffrey said, great, let's call up Trump and we'll go to, I don't recall the name of the casino, but we'll go to the casino, she oh, wow. said. That's, that's Soberg true. later added that she never messaged, she never massaged Trump. In her own deposition, Jeffrey said that she lured, she was lured into working as a masseuse for Epstein when she was 17 and working as a spa attendant at Mar-a-Lago. Okay, so that's all Trump's involvement so far. Alan Dershowitz, wow. the lawyer, right? He's a lawyer and- also in- no, the big constitutional civil rights lawyer. Wasn't he a congressman? I don't know, but big time. Epstein allegedly forced Jane Doe III to have sexual relations with his lawyer, former Harvard Law professor Alan Dershowitz, when she was a minor, according to claims in the documents. The alleged incidents took place not only in Florida, but on private planes in New York, New Mexico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, adding that Dershowitz was also, quote, an eyewitness to the sexual abuse of, other, of many other minors. Wow. Here's one of the court documents, but... Wow. Um, in a 2011 email, Sharon Churcher appears to remind Jeffrey, when I say Jeffrey, that's the, the, the girl, young girl, about Dershowitz's presence in Epstein's inner circle. This is from the email. Don't forget Alan Jer- Dershowitz, J.E.'s buddy and lawyer. Good name for your pitch, um, Churcher wrote, noting Dershowitz's ties with Claude Van Bulo, who was convinced, convicted and then acquitted of the attempted murder of his wife. We. This is another quote. We all... This is from the email. We all suspect Alan is a pedo, and though no proof of that, you probably met him when he was hanging out with J.E. What's pedo? Pedophile. Oh. Three years later, in December 2014, Jeffrey accused Dershowitz of sexually, sexually abusing her during her time with Epstein, but she later dropped the claim, saying, I now recognize I may have made a mistake in identifying Mr. Dershowitz. Um, of course. It keeps going, keeps going. Dershowitz, 85, denied allegations of wrongdoing. He defended himself and Epstein's other association, associates earlier this week. He said, you could judge them for having shown bad judgment, but you can't conclude that any accusations against them are true without hearing the evidence. Stephen Hawking. Uh, Epstein offered a reward to Jeffrey's friends, acquaintances, and even family members in order to help prove that her allegations that theoretical physicist and cosmologist Stephen Hawking participated in an orgy were false. Let me see. How could he have sex? His penis works. He just can't move. So you just blow him? Or you just get on, yeah, get on top of him. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> Look at that. It's like fucking an alien. Yeah. Seriously. Al Gore, 
Uh, Maxwell's attorneys requested Jeffrey provide Jesus. photos or evidence of herself with high, several high profile people, including Al Gore. This is from the deposition. Did you ever see Al Gore on the island? No. Did you ever see his wife, Tipper Gore, on the island? No. Okay, so Soberg denied ever meeting Gore in her testimony. Um, Jeffrey's team objected the motion on the grounds that such documents were in custody and control of Maxwell and Epstein. Um, Sarah Ferguson, I don't know who that is, was a n named, she was the housekeeper at Epstein's uh, Palm Beach mansion. Um, Leslie Wexner, that's the one who I've always talked about. He's the CEO of Victoria's Secret. Yeah. Um, during Maxwell's deposition, she denied giving a woman an outfit of a sexual nature to wear for Les Wexner, Epstein's financial advisor and one-time business partner. Maxwell also said she has not communicated with the bil billionaires uh, whose ties with Epstein date back to the 1980s. In a third trip of documents released on Friday, Wexner's wife, Abigail, was name-checked on what appeared to be a notepad from Epstein's Palm Beach home. Abigail Wexner wanted to talk about something, quote, private in the handwritten note. New transcripts from Maxwell's testimony that were released on Friday also revealed that the British socialite confirmed that she knew Epstein. She denied, however, knowing whether Epstein accuser Maria Farmer was ever at Wexner's Ohio property. Um, keeps going. Chelsea Clinton, instead of giving a deposition in a civil suit, Maxwell attended the wedding of for, former first daughter, Chelsea Clinton. The socialite Maxwell? Who's Maxwell? Ghislaine. Uh, yep. She was at Chelsea's wedding. It's like, Come on. It's so weird. I agree. Uh, the socialite initially agreed to be deposed. Um, Bill Richardson. I don't know who that is. New Mexico governor, Bill Richardson. He was in the documents. Jean-Luc Brunel. Who's that? French know. modeling scout. Uh, Marvin Minsky. I don't know who that is. Michael Jackson. Sober claimed to have met Michael Jackson at Epstein's Palm Beach home. She denied ever massaging Jackson. I mean, we all knew Michael Jackson was into kids. But boys. Boys. Yeah, but I'm sure Epstein could get, get you both. David Copperfield, the magician, that, he's, that's a hurtful one. Wait, but he's creepy, isn't he? A little bit, I guess. Yeah, he's, I bet you he, he, he's a... Uh... Soberg described magician David Copperfield performing tricks at a dinner at one of Epstein's homes. What's so bad about that? That's what he does. Well, that's also weird. Why is Epstein having dinners and having the best magician in the world do tricks? It could be his friends, but no, but... You you wouldn't want if we had a dinner party. You Copperfield was there. You want him doing? Yeah, but I feel like if you're Co like everyone knew what Epstein did. That's the thing. If you're Copperfield, you're not go like you were like you're I'm saying not guilty by association. I get it's just it. like when when you know people are up to bad shit. Don't hang out. Don't do anything Listen, with you lay them. Lay down with dogs. You're gonna get fleas. Yeah, I get it. And who he might, sure he might not have done anything wrong, but like what are you doing going to his home? And you might not have known. That is a good defense. There are people that I'm sure I know in my life that I or think you, are good people that and, I like, and, you might and have, they have an underbelly that's and bad. And you might not have the insight. Like That's what I mean. Like, there would have been plenty of lawyers that would have been like, I'm going on the plane. Right, just because, they like, go, oh, I'm, sure, this I'm, is my I'm, client. A, a yeah, private, sure. But a private plane. Right. I've never been on one. Yeah. Or not even that. Just be like, yeah, I'm doing business. 100%. And not think, oh, this might be shady business. But you have to think about that shit. Yeah. Um. So here, oh, so Soberg said he questioned about David Copperfield. He questioned me if I was aware that girls were getting paid to find other girls, she added, noting that the illusionist did not specify what he meant. So saying, talking about girls uh, to one of the girls at a party. If it's true. If it's true, right. Interesting. Um, Tom Pritzker, I don't know who that is. Oh, Tom Pritzker is the Hyatt Hotain chair, chair heir, chain. So he's the heir to the Hyatt family. Um, estimated six point two billion dollar net worth. Um, Unbelievable. Glenn right. Dubin, do you know who that is? Nope. Um, hedge fund billionaire. Uh, Maxwell sent out Jeffrey to give the hedge fund billionaire an erotic massage after she completed her training as part of Epstein's entourage. Glenn told me to go to Glenn Dubin and give him a massage, which means sex. Um, Dubin's wife, former Miss Sweden, dated Epstein for several years. So here's the deposit. Uh, yeah, it's just that's the same thing. All right. Yeah. Um, I mean, it keeps sick. going. People are sick. Chris Tucker, Kevin Spacey, George Lucas, Naomi Campbell. Well, isn't Kevin, wait, isn't Kevin Spacey gay? Yeah. Chris Tucker, the comedian? From Rush Hour? Yeah, the black guy. Rush Hour star Chris Tucker was name dropped in one of the depositions that was on release Friday when attorneys presented Maxwell a flight log from Epstein's private plane. Tucker appeared on the list of names. So he flew on Epstein's plane. Kevin Spacey, George Lucas, Star Wars creator. Um, Naomi Campbell, 
Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, Kate Blanchett, Cameron Diaz, Bruce Willis. Oh my God. The Pope? While under questioning about possible nude photos at Epstein's Palm Beach mansion, Johanna Soberg recalled that recalled there being snapshots everywhere, including one of Maxwell and the Pope. While Soberg did not specify when the photo may have been taken or which Pope it was photo she was photographed with, witnesses previously recall seeing a photograph at Epstein's mansion of him with Pope John Paul II, who was problematic. That, that was the Pope that resigned, but they kicked him out because he was like problematic. Um, People are crazy. It's crazy. crazy. The craziest one too, and then we'll wrap up the Epstein thing that no one talks about. In the front of Epstein's Florida Palm Beach mansion, which is torn down, by the way. They tore it down. You don't tear, no mansions in Palm Beach are torn down. Well, they're On the island. They're building a new home. No, oh, come on. They tore it down because there was shit in there that, that they want. They just get rid of all the evidence, tear it down. Come on. All right, go ahead. Um, in the, when you walk in, into the house, in like Epstein's office, I, I can show you pictures of it. There were two paintings. One of George Bush, the president, and it was when he was president at the time, sitting on the floor of the Oval Office like a kid, crisscross applesauce, playing with blocks, holding up the two towers of blocks, and he's holding a toy plane, and he and he like is about to hit the plane into the towers. This is a painting, like the twin towers. Yeah, and it's Bush as like playing with toys on the floor of the Oval Office, and then there's another painting. That's bizarre. Extremely. What's the point? What's the point? I'm a little confused. People speculate that the point is like, it's a power thing. It's like, if you have that, it's like, I have power even over the presidents. Like, I'm like, I have their dirty secrets so you wanted think, in my house. You think it, I'll show you the painting. Yeah, I want to see that. Um, Epstein painting Bush. Bryce is fucking whistling. Yeah. Okay, and then the other one, because it's about to come up too when I show uh, images. There's also, uh, there's another painting of Clinton, President Clinton, sexy, sexy, like laying down sexy in a chair with women's legs, high heels and stockings on. So he has that in his house where these people have come and visited. Yeah, paintings of them. Not, it's like weird. Like he had these commissioned and they're displayed in his house where he would have these parties. It means he has something over these presidents. Exactly. He's okay. mocking them. You know this, that, right? This is the, the Bush one. So he's holding a paper airplane, and there are two. Make it bigger, please. Um, hold on. That's not going to work. That's, that's the Clinton one, okay? So I would tell the fucker to take that down. Right? It's, it's Clinton in a dress with high heels, and he's, he's like holding himself like a woman and he's pointing directly at the viewer of the painting. Very disturbing. And then, so here, look, it says, um, Jeffrey Epstein had a bizarre, hanging in his Manhattan mansion, despic, de, depicting the former president lounging on a chair in the Oval Office. Um, this is a picture of it in the house. Isn't that weird? Very weird. Um, let me see if I can find the, oh, there, there. here's the Bush one. So it's Bush sitting on the floor with like a stupid grin on his face, holding a paper airplane. First of all, terrible artist, by the way. Yeah. Holding a paper airplane and... Knocking over the plane, knocking over the blocks. And there were two blocks of... Two like block... Uh, what's it called? Like Wooden a, blocks. Yeah, but like groupings of them that are all knocked over. Very indicative of like 9-11 Twin Towers, in my opinion. It's weird. Yeah, right? Very bizarre. So those, those are in his house. That's, that's just like I have power over the presidents. That's it. I think so. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. We know what went on. I mean, we know. Come on, everyone knows. And the fucking plan. Everyone knows. And at this point, no one really cares. That's the crazy thing. Like them to holding everything back worked. No one really cares. Like right, time takes care of these things. Yeah. People move on to the next time. Clinton topic. is obviously involved in everything. And people are just like, okay. But you're right. If Trump was involved, it'd be, it'd be, oh a, my God. It'd be the story of the century. That's how you know he's not involved. That would have been nail the coffin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100% would be done. And it's like you would think he would be involved because he runs in those circles. He lived in Palm Beach with Epstein. They were both wealthy people. Like, the fact that they don't have anything on Trump is, is the opposite of where there's smoke, there's fire. Where there's no smoke, there what, can't be a fire. Haven't they tried to investigate him nonstop? Exactly. And they find nothing. That's what I'm saying. Whether you like him or not. So he's doing something right. Don't you agree? They, being, they've tried so hard and, and it's the like, amount of money if spent. he really did bad things anything they would have they would have found anything. it they would have found it right even the whole Mueller thing they were like 
they investigated for years and Mueller himself was like, we we don't have anything. Right. He was like, he's clean. There's nothing. Isn't that Which is crazy. So they're trying now to go with the same bank fraud by saying what his place was worth. His, his apartment was worth, eight, he overinflated it by 800,000 more or something. It's like, but, are you serious? But, but let, they they but, were raping children. But, but let's go one step further. But but if so, if you submit a bank application and for a loan and you say, I think this is what my place is worth, they still bank gets it appraised. It's not like it's sure. under oath, like you're saying, I know what it's worth. Right. This is what it's worth. It's like it's you worth. forged the appraisal. Right. They're going to get appraised, and they're going to loan based on the appraised value, certain loan to value. I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. Yes. Speaking of, you know, the, the whole thing now is like one of the lawsuits, and they were like valuing Mar-a-Lago, and the, the court determined that it was valued at $18 million. As opposed to? You think Mar a Lago is worth $18 million? Oh, no, it's probably worth $180 Over a hundred. Yeah. Way over a hundred yeah, million. I agree. But they're doing that purposefully to like hurt his It's impossible. Hurt his no, net worth. It's not. The land alone is worth $50 million. Oh, easy. That if the, not more, yeah. Because it's huge. It's like five lots. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, it's so stupid. That that but one comical. when I saw that, it's that's comical. like that one's the most blatant because it's we fraud. straight up it's know. fraud. It's fraud. That, like the next plot of land, which is probably right. worth a fraction of the size, okay. it's probably worth thirty I million. I do closings for clients right, exactly. on the ocean. You know, and they're on the ocean. It's more like an acre lot, whatever. You're talking thirty million dollars, yeah, just for the. And they're valuing Mar a Lago at eighteen no, million, it's literally probably, it's probably one hundred fifty to two hundred million dollars. It's probably more than one hundred fifty, yeah, because there are homes in LA that are. It's worth like, like a hotel. Yeah, it's full. It's a full resort, right? It's got to be two hundred million dollars. You know, it's ridiculous. Yeah, like that one. And he so bought it for like blatant. five million. What a, what a steal. <laughs> they they got to be deflating the value to like hurt his they're portfolio, doing, hurt his net worth. No, they're doing, they, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. All right, let's do a fraudly advice. Okay. Um, That's a long one. Yeah, this is a long one, but this person DM'd me and was like, can you do my fraudly okay. advice? I need the help with it now. Go ahead. Um, it's not, she wanted to be anonymous. Uh, hey, John O'Brien, I'm looking for advice on a situation going on with my family and significant other. I've been with my boyfriend for almost two years now, and my family essentially hates him. There are a lot of details to the situation that would be too long to explain in detail, so here are some highlights. I'm almost 25, and my boyfriend is 35. Big yikes already. Yeah, you have two strikes. Parents don't like him, and that's a big well, age no, gap. I think the parents don't like him because of certain things. I know, but either way, parents. parents don't like it's not a good thing. A 10-year age gap when you're 40 and 50, not a big deal. 20 and 30, huge deal. Huge deal. When he was, when he was twenty, you were ten. All right, but he wasn't dating. That's anyone. Jeffrey Epstein. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> it all ties back. My boyfriend's a very successful barber. How successful can you be as a barber? <laughs> Owns a house and has an amazing family. I met him when I was living at home with my parents, and slowly started spending more and more time at my boyfriend's house to the point now where I live here, but never officially moved all my things out of my parents' house. My boyfriend and I were a little on and off in the beginning due to some concerns about the eight that concerns if the age difference would be an issue. So therefore he was on and off with my family. I'm very close with my family and I've always wanted the relationship between John. Wait, I'm very close to my family and I've always the relationship between John and Nell and the boys are how I am with my parents. Open, healthy, can come to me with anything type of relationship. My parents expressed that they didn't like him after about nine months into our relationship. They stated their reasons, some being valid, like, Things were a little awkward between them a handful of times that they met and many that were unvalid, such as the way he looks like a pretty boy because he cares about the way he dresses, how his hair is done, and he's more, quote, metrosexual looking. And then in parentheses, my mom's words. Other ridiculous reasons included I was not drinking as much as normal. I'm playing pickleball too much, which he introduced me to. And, quote, he's not a man's man. Lastly, when they asked for reasons why he is good, I told them he wants to provide for me and my mom answered with, quote, you don't need anyone to provide for you. You can provide for yourself. Because they've only been around him three or four times, they don't know him, but they say they do. I was in a toxic relationship in college where my ex was manipulative to me, but at one point in the relationship, I asked my parents to give him a chance, and they did, but it ended up traumatically. So when I've asked them to give my now boyfriend a chance, they said, why does he deserve another chance? And we have your ex. We gave your ex a chance. Look how that turned Well, out. that's stupid, but go ahead. Yeah, that's childish. I've had two conversations with my parents about this to try and fix the situation, but each ended with me crying and telling, and then telling me it's my life so I can do what I want. He is not talked about unless I bring him up in conversation to try and tell them things we're doing or the ways he's good to me, but they never extend the conversation. The only thing my family asks about is related to my work or pickleball. 
my Weird, relationship with all my family members has suffered and I'm now more distant with them. They blame him for this, but I blame them because they are trying to dictate who I should be with, who is worthy enough for me. And when I'm around, it's all surface level conversation. Only 20% of my life is talked about. I can't say I want to spend the rest of my life with my boyfriend as my family's approval means a lot to me, but I picture having a long future with him, which I don't feel with other boyfriends. In the next couple of days, I plan on speaking to my dad and telling him I'm struggling with not having a close relationship with them anymore. And I want my boyfriend to have a late, to have a relationship with them. And I want to choose who I want to be with. And I want that choice to be respected by them. I love my boyfriend. He's good to me and treats me very well. We have so much fun together and he's my best friend. His family treats me as if I'm one of them. Aside from my parents, we don't have any problems in our, in our relationship. Thanks for taking the time to read this. I look forward to hearing your advice. Okay, what's your thoughts? And I'll tell you my thoughts. My thoughts are, if, he, if this guy is good, if you like him, if you think he's a good person, he's a good boyfriend, you're happy with him, and if you're if the situation with your parents was out of the picture, you would this is the life you'd want, then I think that you have to pursue it and you just have to try to work to socialize him and your parents better, right? Just work on it. You said they've only met three, four times. That's nothing. I think you have to tell your parents, look, this person is in my life. I give him a chance, don't give him a chance, whatever. Ignore my past, bring up my past, whatever. But I'm going to be bringing him around more often because I want. You're important to me. He's important to me. I want you guys to get to know each other, form a relationship, and then see if it works. The only thing her parents... It seems like her parents are being a bit ridiculous here, but, but the only thing she said is my parents say they don't like him because he's a little awkward. Okay, but Bronson, I think your advice was great advice, but... Again, if she was like, he used to abuse me and my no. parents remember that and so they don't like him, different story. But on the, I think your advice is great advice, but I do, I'm not sure if... Her, if what she's saying is 100% accurate. Sure, but this is all it, we have. I know, I'm just saying, it could be skewed. Now, based on what she's saying, I agree with you. I think it sounds like, again, I like to hear what your parents thought. Like, if you want to have your parents write in, I like to hear what they have to say. But I do think it sounds very childish what the parents, the way the parents act based on her perception. If the guy's nice to her, um, then, and you want to pursue it, I think you ought to yourself pursue. I think you need to choose who you want, not what your parents want. Yeah. Especially but, if he's good. But I think you need to, but it's, if you've had a close relationship with your parents, it's, it sounds, right. It's not weird. It sounds very unorthodox or very unusual that they're, it's so, it's something's missing. And, and, and that's why, that's what, listen, Brian. Maybe they just don't like him for her. I get it. But, but, but here's the reason why I said that. When I first started saying that's her perception, because she said she's very close and open with the parents talk about it like you guys are with us, something's missing in there. Yeah, but there have been times in the past where your sons have brought people home and they're like, and they were just normal, nice girls, whatever, and nice relationships, and you're just like, nope, it's not what I want for you. Nope. No, but it's, it's for no for for no reason of the per for no fault of the p- person, right? It's not like. Not it's not like the girlfriend did anything bad like this guy. It's just you were like okay, you were just like enough. nope. There, that's not who I want for you. So it is what it is, and we are open, very open, and we have close relationships. Fair enough, you know. Fair enough, no, because it's right. Because I'm not. I will never be mean. Or sure, rude. and her parents don't seem mean, right? But They're I'm. But like, I'm no. not. But I'm not going to be. G- Going out of my way to open up, like to treat them, like, and that's let's all. Say, it, I treat Hannah, you know, that kind of. And thing. that's all it seems with this. Her parents her, don't seem like no, fuck this guy. They're just like, no, all right, we don't made, want him. You made choice, right? It's your choice. I don't have to accept it, right? Completely. So then, what do you say in that situation? That that's you a found, tough call. you found yourself in. The, so now, in, in, I in think, this, you were about to give the advice to her, saying okay. like, it's your life, do what you want. Wait, but it, in your, in the situations you found I, yourself in. I think Brian you were said, like, no, wait, wait, I'm okay, doing I'm what I'm talking about. Sorry, I'm, let me, I'm sorry, a parent. Sorry. You don't have to do the hearsay. Sorry, I'm a parent. Sorry. It's okay. I think that if it went on for a certain amount of time, a lot longer time, that I guess I would have to be a little more welcoming, but it would still be hard. Like mom would welcome much better than I would, you know, our personalities. I wear it more on my sleeve and say it like it is, and that's just the way I'm. It's good or bad, right or wrong. It just is what it is. Um, but yes, I'm gonna be better to my one of my son's girlfriends if that I like, like them better. I'm gonna be mean, but I won't be as willing, welcoming as willing or welcoming. Which is 
Which is wrong. It's probably. wrong, but it's life. That's that's you. It's not fair to expect a person but to the person to treat people but the same. The same. Token, but on the same token, in reality, my kid, my boys are the most important to me. So I want to make my kids feel comfortable. So I would never want to feel my kids to feel excluded. And Does that all, make sense? Yeah, but there also is validity to like a parent who knows their child well, who knows more about like you just know more. About life than, than us. We raised you, as right. kids. And if you're like, look, nothing wrong with this person, but I'm not, not for you. I, it's, not it's, for not, you. it's not what we want. There is, as a kid, there it's is not what we want. When I, mom and I, we, when we look at our kids' girlfriends or what at the time, we don't look say what we want. Right. We, what say, we want for you. She's not, right. I'm telling you, she's not for you. There is validity to that as a kid being like, shit, yeah, I really like this person. But my parents are saying it's just not right. Let me look into that more. Evaluate that. And Why are they saying dick. that? Like you know us as parents, we, we really want what's best for you. Right. And it seems like her parents aren't being a dick either. They're just like, this isn't what this. We don't if like. If I this. had a daughter who was twenty five, dating a thirty five year, I'd be a little. As a dad, I'm not joking. Yeah, I'd be a little standoffish. I'm being. I'm being straight up. Yeah, I Same. would. I'm just as a, I'm a guy and I'm a dad. And I, if it was my daughter, I'd have a concern with so it. So I guess. To ra- I agree. It's with a you. tough call. I don't. To know how to, I don't know how to advise it. I, I think the advice is just sit down with your parents and talk to them about your feelings. Share with what you just shared with us. I think he's great. We we're. I'm very happy. But what if they say to but, her? But, but, what if they say, "Yeah, but that's great." But we don't. We don't think he's for you, and therefore, I'm not going to welcome myself. Right, no, but then that's what I'm saying. Just have an. If you say you have an open relationship with them, just sit down and be like, "Look, I love him. This is I." Clearly, there's a problem here. Why? What? What is your basis for these problems? And they say what I just said, and then what do you then say? Then she as a has kid? to reevaluate. Then the next step is okay. They're not going to accept it, no matter what. I guess they. Then you. Look, but then shouldn't she no, live but, her own life? Right. No. Then you do two things. You have to look at the validity of it first, and be like, why are they saying what they're saying? They're my parents. They know me well. Is there something? Is there some truth to what they're saying? And you have to look at that and really evaluate relationship. Maybe they and, know it's unless good. Unless there is truth to it, but says I still love them. Then, then she accepts it. Just do then her she life. chooses right. the life she that she wants. Right. And that's her choice. Ultimately, yeah. ultimately, it's your choice. So yeah. I'm being, it's, your parents do, I, I have to leave your parents have what's best interest for you. And like Bron said, they know you and whatever, but on the same token, ultimately, it's still your life and you, have to, and you have to do it. And I think your parents, no matter what, support you. But I'm being honest, I personally, different than mom, would have a harder time if my son's, married someone that I didn't think was right for them. I would still love my kids. I'll always be there, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to go out of my way and treat, which is understandable. I'm just being honest. I, you know, like it's just, I don't, I'm, I'm better to my friends than to people I don't like. Of course. Right. But it's when you keep, but when it comes to your child, you, you should no matter what. I know, but that's child. hard to do. Yeah. But mom is better than I am. Cause I would never want to push my kids away. So yeah. Good luck. I it's, I don't well, you know. I think yeah. I think Bronson's advice was right on point. I tend to agree. Um, but I tell you, if I was a dad with a twenty five year old daughter and I had a thirty five year old guy dating my daughter, it's a little hard if they're fifty and forty. Yeah, it's or a even forty five and thirty five. And because they met, she said they've been dating for two years. So she said, "I'm twenty four, almost twenty five." So, by the way, and he's thirty five. So that she was twenty two. Right, yeah, she's word in it. So it's eleven year difference. That she was twenty two and he was thirty three. That's, that's a big difference. 20, I'm 20, when I was 25, when I was 25, 26, I was like a 22 year old, a child. Imagine dating a 19 year old. Like, yeah, but it's, it's, and it's way more drastic. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's a little bit of a problem. So I, you understand the dad talking about it and not yeah. being confident. He's being protected because he loves you. Yeah. Well, keep us All updated. Right. Yeah. All right. Good love luck. You, Ronnie, love you. Love you too. Good luck. You're joking, right? Well, I'm trying to be hopeful. I'm trying to be optimistic yeah. about that. Well, I guess you're too young to be a little pessimistic like me. The fucking things I see out there, people are stupid.